Say you have an idea, and you want to turn your invention into a business and grow. Here we will show you how, with the best advice, you may bring your invention to life. Protecting your intellectual property can be fraught with difficulties, but you could do worse than consult Mark Sheehan, inventor in residence at the British Library. So, Mark, why should you patent an idea? Well, I patent an idea because I need to protect it. I want to have a license to sue someone, basically, and I want to protect my work. Also, in, in, if I'm selling licenses, as I do, if I didn't have patent or strong intellectual property in some fashion, I would never sell a license ever. So it's a kind of a catch-22. I must have them. I don't always like them because they can be quite expensive, but that said, it's how I make my living. So what should you consider when patenting an idea? I always um, look at intellectual property strategy as early as possible. You know, I would go and look at the technology I'm, I'm inventing and see if it's better to patent it or perhaps do a trademark and, and just find a way of perhaps covering what I can cover at the lowest cost and the broadest as possible as well. So is there anything you should definitely do I would suggest you have a professional patent search done. That really is important. There's nothing worse than spending hours, days, years and money on something which has been done already. So get someone like the British Library, the Intellectual Property Office or a registered uh, patent attorney to, to check it for you. And keep on checking, that's the trick. You know, don't just stop. You know, look at the internet as well, look at trade magazines. And is there anything else? Yeah, never do these things yourself. Never do a patent yourself, please. It'd be the, you'll regret it so much if you're successful because it can be the most important asset in your company. And if you get it wrong, you're going to re regret it the, the forever. So don't do it yourself. I've seen so many people do it and it's been horrendous. And if they're going to sell a license, the potential licensee are going to see that and think, now who are we dealing with? So there's no harm in getting involved with a patent attorney, a registered patent attorney, by the way. Don't get fooled and buy with some of these uh, promotional companies, uh, invention promotional companies. They can be a, a, a shark in disguise. Always use a registered one. And is there anything you should avoid doing? Don't uh, disclose too early. Don't be paranoid either, but because you, you have to show your invention at some stage. But I would suggest that you get people to sign confidentiality early. And if you're going to show it to an organisation, get them to sign as well. If they're not going to sign, at least make sure you have the uh, intellectual property covered and protected through a patent, at least. Okay. But that said, sometimes you've got to take a risk. You've got to be out there. And hopefully, uh, I, I don't think it happens often, but it, you know, things do get stolen. But they only get stolen generally later on when they've been successful. Since we were meeting Mark, I decided to take the opportunity to ask him about an idea which Mike Barfield had come up with. So we've been discussing this issue in the office and to see if we can come up with an invention that we could possibly patent. So I'd like to get your opinion of what you think of this. Well, I'm not quite sure what to say actually. Uh... It's one of the most natural things in the world for uh, dogs, not dog owners, obviously. So this is what we've come up with. S so you can see, he can smell, but he can't touch. OK, well, explain it to me. Well, I've not really seen a muzzle like this before. I mean, obviously, this covers the nose. It has some perforations in it, but it doesn't cover the, the mouth. Uh, I think it's quite unique. I, mean, I, I tend yeah. myself to look at things like this and I, I like things with added value mm. and uh, it seems to me that if you've got something which can sort of do more than what's out there and it has perhaps a unique selling point, mm -hmm. uh, I mean this particular one is uh, maybe a Mr. Trick in a sense that uh, it, it, it doesn't stop them biting or barking or chewing, it's just this as you say uh, he can smell what well, actually is covered so that it's perhaps more hygienic for him but so I'm not overly convinced. So it may be back to the drawing board. Who better to ask than the dog owners themselves? 
In relation to uh, Reggie, now, does he, let's say, does he sniff other dogs? Absolutely, definitely. That's totally natural. And are you happy for him to do that? Yeah. Okay. Um, what about the hygiene issue? Is that an issue at all? <laughs> um, well, he's licking his parts all the time anyway, so I've got to be quite careful about him licking me or the children. I mean, never let him lick our faces okay, but or if, anything like that. But if there was a muzzle that you could have that would actually prevent him from actually having physical contact with another... Um, I would probably think that was quite unnatural. Yeah. And I think I'd need quite a lot of evidence mm. to uh, be reassured that it wasn't something that was cramping his style. Perhaps if we got some advice from an expert in dog behaviour, such as Dr Roger Mugford, the UK's leading animal shrink, we might be able to adapt our design. I think it's a fantastic idea. I want to steal it, obviously, um, yeah. straight away. Um, but I think I may have already been ahead and maybe okay. I've already done it. I'm okay. really sorry. Um, I have a little model here. Bounce. Bounce. Come here. And hello, hello. And this one allows him to take treats. And it's a design which actually we do have um, design protection on. Just gone into mass manufacture. I've no doubt I will sell millions of these in, in the world. They're very comfortable for the dog. A dog can wear this in a hot climate and pant and drink and, as we can see, take treats. But he can't sniff other dogs' uh, delicate private parts, oh which I think you were alluding to. Mm -hmm. Significantly, the real reason for my making this design is that he can't bite anyone. Mm. And that's the real problem with any idea. Usually, somebody has thought of it already. Oh.